This is U of M Transit Way, next to some sport facilities and the TCF Bank Stadium. But next to it stands this, the ADM Delmer Number 4 Grain Elevator, more commonly known as United Crushers Mill. This concrete grain elevator, still standing only because it's too expensive to do anything with, is an imposing example of Minneapolis's past industry. And now with the decline of the grain industry in Minneapolis, is an interesting look into the past with remnants disappearing. Starting in the 1820s, Minneapolis's forests and prairies brought lumber and flour milling in Minneapolis. And with the introduction of railways in the 1860s, Minneapolis soon became an international powerhouse in lumber and flour. With the growing flour industry, the need for grain storage arose. The first grain silos were made of wood with the lumber from nearby Minneapolis mills. But due to this flammable nature, that construction quickly fell out of use. The St. Anthony elevator, which was built in 1901, used tile. And the electric steel elevator, which was built in 1901 as well, used steel. By the 1910s, concrete became the go-to material, with reinforced concrete being used for almost every grain elevator until the last Minneapolis grain bin was constructed in 1957. Along with flour, mills and grain silos were needed to store and produce things such as linseed from flat grain, malt from barley, and the infrastructure created for these products made Minneapolis the national leader in mills, controlling 35% of the mill capacity in the USA. The products from these mills would be shipped across the world. Now enter ADM. The Archer Daniels Midland Company started out as the Archer Daniels Linseed Company in 1902. The Linseed Crushing Company continued to grow until in 1923 they acquired Midland Linseed Products Company and became ADM as they know it today. The ADM Delmer elevators were built between 1925 and 1931, creating what was then the largest elevator facility in the country at the time. The ADM Delmer IV it's the largest of the bunch, and with a capacity of 7 million bushels, it's almost double the capacity of the previous largest elevator, the electric steel elevator. A steel elevator made in the 1900s before the mainstream use of reinforced concrete in grain elevators. It's actually located right over there before it was demolished in early 2017 to make room for these sports facilities. The majority of the ADM facility's life went without major changes. In the 1950s, they switched from soybeans to sunflower seeds to make oils for paints as demand for flour went down. And the buildings were regularly updated with new technologies into the 1970s. But the decline of flour milling and rail transportation in Minneapolis led to a decline of grain storage and industrial production in the semi-district, causing most of the flour and grain elevators to be demolished during the 1960s. Most of the ADM plate was later demolished, except for ADM. Four and one. They were last used up until the 1980s until they were closed indefinitely, leaving most of the elevators abandoned and left to rot. The decaying building was dangerous. Many holes led to giant drops that could kill people, and many other grain elevators, like the Bunge Elevator, and multiple deaths from explorers wandering its halls. But, with the reward for a great view of Minneapolis, walls to spray whatever you want on, and just a good time, the elevator drew many urbex explorers and graffiti artists to its halls. There were many proposals to reuse the remaining elevators, but none were financially or logistically feasible, and the ADM Delmer elevators were left to rot. But, like many other concrete structures, the large concrete walls were put to another non-legal use. Now this is where I'm getting to non-documented territory. Many of this was never documented and just goes on in oral history. So in the early 2000s, one or multiple members of the graffiti crew of United Crushers went to the top of the ADM Delmer No. 4 building with paint rollers and paint. They then painted the giant United Crushers letters on the side of the structure. The consensus is that they painted the giant United Crushers words onto the side of the structure by hanging over the edge with long paint rollers and painting it from the top. Since at least 2007, these words have just remained be it because they're too expensive to remove them or the landowner doesn't care enough to put in the work, probably helped by the fact that the words are relatively unoffensive. They've just stayed. Now in the year 2020, the ADM Delmer number one and four still stand. Through their 90 years, they lived through the highs and lows of the flour industry in Minneapolis, their abandonment, and their destruction of most other grain elevators in the area. 
But by this point, a decade and a half later, the United Crushers' words have taken a life of their own. The third album by the band Policia bears the name, and the nearby brewery Surly created the United Crushers Pale Ale in collaboration with Minnesota United, MN soccer team, to the dismay of the United Crushers crew if I understand correctly. Many don't even know the words are graffiti, just remnants of when the elevator was still in use. But due partially due to the giant white words on the abandoned building, the elevator stays in the public memory 40 years after it was last used. Now, in the year 2020, ADM Delmer number 1 and 4 still stand. Through their 90 years, they lived through the highs and lows of the flower industry in Minneapolis, their abandonment and destruction of most other grain elevators in the area. But they still stay as a reminder of the past, and a landmark for the residents of Minneapolis to admire. But the United Crushers building may be soon changing. Just like how the electric steel elevator was demolished to make room for new sports facilities, the United Crushers mill may be changed permanently to make room for a new neighborhood, Malcolm Yards. Currently only the market is under construction, but one look at their plans shows how much they drastically plan on changing the area, including the United Crushers building. Funnily enough, they plan on keeping the United Crushers words if their plans are correct, but be this another failed attempt at transforming the structure or another step in the building's history, all we can really do is wait.